Let's Sew Easy Pants mini series is back and today is all about those curved shapes on the front and the back that can give you the weirdest looking pants. You're gonna see before and after shots how to improve all these fitting issues that have to do with the shape of these curves on pants. So keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and we're hopping back into pant making trying to make the best pants that we can that can fit our bodies and starting with very simple styles like a looser type pant that is a pull on pant that just has elastic at the waist These types of pants can always be easier to fit and so if you've never made pants for yourself so it's a good place to start when you get comfortable with this when you get to know your body your measurements how to adapt patterns to fit your unique body later on maybe you can start making pants have zippers that are fitted jeans even so many possibilities and this is a good place to start this mini series called let's so easy pants has been created with a lot of love from me to all of you because i really want you to make your first pair of pants and feel proud and be successful because it is a game changer in sewing you can make yourself really nice fitting pants with the fabrics that you choose and that will fit your body and you can walk out into the street feeling really good in your pants it's really hard to buy pants in the shop sometimes that will fit us properly so it is a little bit of a process to get there but worth all the little bits that we have to do and there's no one rushing us really you can set some time aside for this project and there is no race no one is rushing you to finish these pants if you have no idea what i'm talking about let's so easy pants is a mini series i've been running on my channel this is episode five and if you haven't caught up yet please catch up please catch up because all these episodes build from the previous so you might not really get what i'm talking about today if you haven't watched the previous ones episode one was about pattern recommendations that could be a good start for you to make your first pair beginner friendly type pants episode two was about the best fabric choices for these projects and the worst fabrics to stay away from <laughs> episode three was how to measure your body and then having those measurements how you compare them to the pattern and episode four was about how to adjust that front and that back crotch length if it's too short or too long for your body all these videos are filled with really practical footage of me actually wearing these ill-fitting pants and how to adjust the patterns for that and in the last episode we finished with pants that fit at the front and the back with a proper length nothing is digging in everything's comfortable but then there might be some discrepancies in the shape of the crotch curve. The front has a curve, the back has a curve. According to how the pattern you chose was drafted, that curve may or may not match the shapes of your body. Our bodies are unique. The shape that we have on our front might not match what is actually on that pattern. Same as the back. And I've mentioned before that sometimes the curves there can be a bit shallow or could be deeper. And it just depends on the pattern, the brand. If you have several pant patterns, you might like to compare. I have been comparing and there certainly are differences between brands and the block that these patterns were originated from. So they will vary. And if you need some adjustment with one specific pattern, it doesn't mean that you will need that same type of adjustment for another pattern. And your eye will get trained to look at these shapes and to notice the difference. We will start with issues that happen on the front. The front is a super visible area and usually you see your front when you look in the mirror. So these ill-fitting front pants can be super apparent for you and bother you more than what's going on at the back. You know, we might look in the mirror, we might take pictures at the back, but we can't really see ourselves, you know, from the back. <laughs> and I know fitting issues at the back also annoy us, but I think the front ones are like right there in your face when you look at yourself in the mirror. And, you know, little tiny changes in the front can, you know, make or break your pant pattern and just make it look pretty bad or pretty good. And you'll be surprised at how small the changes can be on the muslin. Again, I have sewn a pair of pants and I've played with things in there to be able to modify them so that you can see what I'm doing. 
and we're gonna see one fitting issue at the front that is very unsightly, very ugly to look at, not nice to wear, and that is when you have excess at the crotch curve, you have excess fabric with these vertical folds that like curve in and make it look like you're wearing the foot of a certain animal that lives in the desert that people use to transport themselves and things and that they don't drink much water. So let's hop in to see how this looks on on myself and again this takes a lot of courage from me to go and film these types of things for you but I really think the visual can help you so let's hop into there. In this case the depth and the length of the front crotch is fine but look here look at the front and that shape and that excess there it's really hard for me to show you but you can see there's these folds going down excess there at the front crotch the hideousness of the desert mammal coming to play in your pants super ugly okay that looks pretty bad but you'll be surprised how this can improve here we have the pants inside out this is the front crotch there the waistband is attached to there everything has been sewn with the seam allowance of the pants five eighths of an inch and you can see my white line there has the original shape now i had this bulging and excess there and this is when you scoop in here on this curve, just trying to make it more deep. And the amount is small. It, you don't just go in and scoop a 3 eighths of an inch right away. I would in this case just try a quarter of an inch. So here in this distance where the curve you can see is a bit shallow looking. And you know, this could suit some bodies, but it does not in this case suit my body. So around the middle there, just find a point and make a mark about just a quarter of an inch below that and then just draw a new curve like that and then bring it back to where it was so you can see the shape will just go in deeper a little bit and then come up to the original so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this with yellow thread so you can see the difference remember I'm using a long stitch length so that it's easy to remove and fix this along the way Okay, so that changed the shape here at the bottom, just made it a little bit deeper, not so shallow as the original white line that you're seeing there. The yellow line is my new line. I'm going to try it on now and see if it improves the fit of the front. This is a front pant, little one, with a standard type curve that you might find in a pattern. I'm going to place on top another little pant to show you what the difference is with what we've just done. From the top it's the same, then when we get to the curve you can see that the pink one is scooped in. And that's how it compares to the original. Changes in the front need to be minimal. You can start with an eighth of an inch if you want to. If you feel that the volume that you have there in excess is not that much, try it on. You know, that's why we're doing long stitch lengths in our muslins so that it can be easy to pull out those areas and sew again. Try a quarter of an inch. You know, I wouldn't be happy to go more than half an inch. Like half an inch would be the extreme. But in that case, you would need to add back onto the hips. I think up to a quarter of an inch, I would be happy to scoop in that front without adding back onto the side seams, just on the hip area on that little bit, just adding a tad. You know, scooping in does remove circumference from that area. So if you scoop in that much, you might deform the original shape a lot and end up with really really tight pants on the hips here is the front after scooping that curve in and you can see that it's flatter here i don't have that i'm going to push this to create bulge on purpose here on the front that type bulge is not there anymore and i'm quite happy with that i wouldn't take away more because then you take away a tiny bit from here and the feet around here is okay around the hips and you can experiment maybe just take an eighth of an inch a quarter of an inch here you can see a side by side before and after scooping in that front curve a little bit just a little bit i only did a quarter of an inch i think i was nice and conservative i think that's a nice amount to try 
and that small amount can make a big difference. You can do it on your muslin, you don't need to sew another pair of pants. Now continuing on the front, there's the opposite. That is when at the front crotch curve, it is too tight. You try and lift your legs or just walk, you just feel tightness there and you have these horizontal poor stress lines and it does not look good either so let's go and see how that looks here is another problem you'll see on the front sometimes depending of the way the pattern is drafted comparing to your body so again the depth and the length would be okay and when you move it feels tight but just right there at the bottom okay and it's just the curve there is not matching I think the curve in this case is too deep in comparison to the body. So you saw that there were specific drag lines across the front. They can radiate all around, you know, around going down. People like to call them whiskers, like cat whiskers around your crotch. Just signifies that it's too tight there, that you need more space there. That maybe the crotch curve for that pattern is just too scooped for you. So let's see how to improve that. Inside of the pants you've just seen where there were lines going across, just stress lines going horizontal. It means that the width here is just not enough at the hip. And you might have chosen the hip size correct for you. It's just that this area here is just too scooped. So what you would do here is choose a middle point on the curve there. Make a dot there and you know, same, these adjustments are slight, an eighth, a quarter. Don't go crazy and add too much. I've added a quarter and then I'm just gonna make a little curve that is gonna be a little bit more shallow in comparison to what the pants were or originally drafted with. You can see the original shape there, quite deep. That's the white line from my white stitching and now I'm gonna sew with yellow. And just make the curve a little bit more shallow to see if that is going to improve the appearance of the pants on the front. There you can see the difference, my original one and then the correction and this little area needs to be removed from here and that's why we're doing long stitch length so that it's super easy to remove done that's out so now i can try it on now this is the original and i will put behind the new shape that this crotch curve took on the front after that adjustment you can see up to there it's all the same but then the crotch curve is shallower as you can see and this is what has just been modified on the pattern if that is an issue that you're finding after that let's see if it made any improvement i'm being conservative again with these adjustments and only did a quarter of an inch so i've adjusted the curve that in essence released a little bit of space there in this crotch area and now it's more relaxed it feels more relaxed and I don't have those deep lines there. This has also to do with the hip circumference. So please choose your pattern based on your hip circumference properly and then assess this area because if you have tight pants to begin with, this problem will just be more accentuated and you might think you have this problem, but it might just be a hip circumference issue. If you started with a size that does not fit your hips, you're working with woven fabric. This fabric is just gonna stretch and it might look like that and you might think you need to do this adjustment just make sure your hips fit properly i'm going to show you in tiny little pants so you can see how these three compare i know these visual things help a lot in these things of pants it's just sometimes hard to imagine if i just talk about these things without actually showing so let's see a summary of how these three lines can look compared to each other here we have the front and they are all stacked up on top of each other. The white one is a standard pattern. At the back you can see the yellow line where this curve has been made more shallow and the pink one on top where it's been scooped. So this little area changes that, that you make on the pattern are small-ish compared to the back and it can affect the fit for better or worse of your pants just in that small area there. Okay, so we've talked about the front, what happens at the back. You will find that at the back, the type of drag lines that you will see or how the item fits on you, it might be quite similar to what you saw on the front, but a little bit different. 
in the back you can have a lot of excess there on that curve and, and you also have folds and roundy type drag lines it does not look very good and this is where scooping in comes to play so let's see an example of a pair of pants that don't fit very well that just have too much volume there for my bottom so let's have a look you can see these pants and you can see that I've got some excess right there these types of like round drag lines here right there very hard to show but I just have excess here on the curve, just excess. So if your pattern fits you like that, you think you've chosen the right size, you have the right hip circumference, but then you have all those little drag lines at the bottom that just are rounded and foldy, you just have excess there. You can improve the fit there by scooping in. <laughs> the famous scoop so let's see how i'm gonna sort that out on these to improve the fit okay i've got it sideways because it won't fit that way so you can see it better and this is the original shape there that the pads have so basically if this happens to you it means that the pattern used a shape that accommodates more volume on the bottom and it might not necessarily match the shape that you have on your bottom. On this curve here at the bottom, I'm just gonna choose an amount and actually you can scoop out a little bit more on the back than you can on the front. I'm gonna try one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. So around the middle there, I've just marked that. I'm just freehand drawing this. So it's gonna be a bit lower there and then go out to the original point there on the crotch there and that actually removes some extra volume that your bottom might not be having so a pattern that's drafted with a shallower curve here accommodates more volume on the bottom and if your body doesn't match that you have those excess round type drag lines here that do not look very nice here is a little back pattern piece and I'll put in front a curve that has been scooped so you can compare. And this is what this one looks like. You can see the pink outline there is just more scooped than the original, which was more shallow. The original drafted for more volume here on the bottom. And that scoop there tends to improve the fit there. After scooping in 3 eighths of an inch, which is an amount I chose, Let's see how they look. Now we're seeing how the back looks like with the 3 eighths of an inch scooped at the bottom. And I think it is good. You're never gonna have really tight fit here because it's not the style of the pants. It's not supposed to cup the bottom. It's just supposed to drape over it. So you can also be conservative in the amount that you scoop in, depending on what you think. You know, this is all experiments. You can't really know how much to do. Just do little bits at a time. I just did 3 eighths of an inch to start with. You can scoop out a little bit more in the back than you can in the front. It's a larger area and the area of the scoop is also longer. So it can conform to the body a bit better if you do bigger changes, but not that much either. So don't go crazy and scoop out a lot. You know, just be conservative. I did 3 eighths of an inch. I think I would have been happy to do maybe half an inch. I think I wouldn't be happy to do more. Now, this adjustment of scooping at the back is really good for improving the fit when you have a smaller bottom than what the pattern was drafted for. So the pattern was drafted for a bottom that had more volume there. And if you're body does not match that you have that excess there there is a thought that if you use this method to scoop in at the back you would be lengthening the back rise and this could be used as a method to lengthen the back rise we talked about lengthening the back rise in the previous video in episode four and i showed you other methods i didn't even talk about scooping but scooping will actually not alter the length as much as you think you can scoop in and if you measure that, you will see that the difference is not enough for when your body needs quite a nice length correction. So let's see. I know a lot of you need to see to believe and if you think scooping will add a lot of length, you will see that it's not that much. So let's see. This is not an adjustment that is going to work if you think you're lacking total length at the back crotch. If you just scoop it out thinking it's gonna add a lot of length to the curve, it will add some length, but tiny amount that won't actually make a difference. So I've just marked this so you can see. I'm going to measure the original seam line there so we can see how much it is. Just 
to compare it's four and three quarter inches there now when we measure this new curve here you have five inches so basically it adds an extra quarter of an inch in the length down here and if you're looking at total length and you see that your body needs an inch an inch and a half more just doing this little thing to like add length is not actually going to help you and especially if you have a fuller bottom that does need this shape if you're just scooping it out to add length in that attempt you're not doing yourself a favor <laughs> So this is not an adjustment you would do to add length, but to mimic the shape that your bottom has in comparison to the pattern. As you can see, scooping in 3 eighths of an inch, which is not a small amount, only added a quarter of an inch to the total length of the crotch curve at the back, which is negligible. You know, if you remember when I had to lengthen mine, I needed a hefty amount, an inch and a half. I, that's the how much I needed to add to the length of my pants at the back. Scooping in and just getting that quarter of an inch extra would have done absolutely nothing for the feet of my pants. So scooping in at the back does lengthen the rise, but it is so small. I mean, the difference is so small. It is not an effective technique if you're looking to lengthen the rise as such as an only method that you would like to use. It's not for that. <laughs> Okay, so what happens in the opposite scenario? What happens if your buttocks, your bottom is more voluminous than what the pattern is drafted for? What happens if the back curve on the pattern that you've chosen is more scooped? You know, that's how some patterns are drafted actually. And you're gonna find fitting issues here too. So I have a pair of pants to show you how uncomfortable this can be. On these you can see that this is okay, this hip circumference. This vertical seam here is not pulling towards the back or anything. But when you look at the back, here is the full hip, below there it's just excessively tight and you can feel it and when you sit down it's super uncomfortable. As you can see it's very tight, it's uncomfortable and it's not at the hip length actually, it's a little bit below there from the hip down. You just feel the tightness, you feel the seams are popping, uh, you sit down, it's going to be uncomfortable. There's just not enough space there to change the shape of this curve slightly to improve the fit there. So let's see how that can work. Here is the inside look and you can see that this is a nicely scooped curve, very scooped. And if you have a fuller bottom than what this was drafted for, you might just need some space here. And this is where 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance come handy because you might be able to have enough space to add that onto the muslin without having to make another one. For this type of adjustment, it usually comes below the hip, so the full hip would be around there and then the tightness is sort of below that. I would start maybe a bit further up from the curve, just about there, and then choose a middle point there. Mark there, I'm gonna do 3 eighths of an inch there. And now it's the opposite, the curve is being made shallower so not so scooped like the pattern and you would start there and just blend the line there and just make it shallower and then back to the original point there that the crotch has so it wouldn't be so scooped that would give you more space around there and you would be left with a small small seam allowance and now if that adjustment works then you can transfer this onto your pattern and then correct the seam allowance on your pattern so what you actually sew does end up having a proper seam allowance there because you can't have pants like this, right? <laughs> okay, you can see how the curve has become more shallow there and not so scooped as the original. This original seam also needs to be removed. Very easy to do with these types of stitches. It doesn't take any time at all. Same little pant and I will put another pant behind it so we can compare. With the yellow behind it, you can see how the curve has been modified. From further up, you can see there's a hip notch. So let's pretend the line is there. From there, maybe a, a little bit further up and then the curve is just made shallow and then it reaches the same original point there of the crotch. This more shallow type shape is gonna allow more volume here where your bottom is, where the buttocks are. This is where I mentioned in the previous video where I talked about making muslins that hopefully the pant that you're working with has at least 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
if it has less than that just add a little bit more just make sure you know how much you added so that you know <laughs> because sometimes when you make these adjustments you'll just end up with no seam allowance or a very small seam allowance as you can see there i made the curve shallower and it left me a tiny amount there still good still good for me to sew that and try the pan on to see how it fits okay here's a fit that's more acceptable at the back not so tight right there and you can actually move your legs remember you do need some volume here you do need to have some space to live your life and sit down so a better fit more appropriate fit remember these pants are not fitted pants we're not doing knit pants here we are doing woven pants these types of pants have acceptable volume at the back you do need that volume there you just don't want diagonal drag lines you don't want ugly vertical fold lines you know you can have a bit of volume a bit of something at the back there take a lot of pictures just make sure that you're happy with what you see but you do need that space to move around to walk to sit down to be comfortable you know, if you make skin tight pants out of woven fabric, you just won't be able to sit down or breathe or do anything but stand there. And that's not the point. You want to be living in your pants and they need to be functional. Now, if we want to compare all three, the middle one being the standard pants, this is where the crotch has been scooped more and this is where it's been made shallow. You can see them all stacked on each other and how much difference this curve shape can have on the way the pants fit you according to your body. In this series, I'm always talking about pants in the context of not wide leg, but wider leg, straight leg maybe, not tight pants. So in that context, I'm talking about you do need a little bit volume at the back to be able to live and to be able to move in your pants. Another dense pant video coming to an end. I do hope this helps you. I know it is not that fun to watch, but I'm sure that if you just go along, follow along, maybe watch more than once, all these concepts are going to start making sense and you're going to be able to apply these to the pant that you're making so that you end up with a really great fitting pant. The next episode in this series will be about fitting the thighs. When you try on a muslin, there are some signs that you can see there that indicate that sometimes you need to fiddle with that inseam. We haven't touched the inseam yet, but it is another area of a pant that you can modify to improve the fit. So look out for that one. I have said before that these videos take me a long time to make, <laughs> very long time to make. So I am aiming to have two videos next week about pants. Please make yourself some pants. It is fun. This is only fabric. If you're damaging muslin fabric, there's no harm done, but much to gain, much for you to learn about your body. And you know, that's always a positive thing. A little bit of wasted fabric and some ill-fitting muslins do not harm you. They don't harm anyone. You can always keep trying and making progress with this really fun project, which is making pants. If you enjoy this content, click on the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, Join this community, tap on the bell so you get notified when more videos like this go up live and you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon with another sewing video. Bye!